Good morning, I'm Kenneth Moat. And I'm Janae Norman. Here are the top five things to know this Monday. Number one, the showdown with Iran. Iran's naval chief is warning that Iran is capable of shooting down more U.S. spy drones a day after Iranian lawmakers shouted death to America. The threat comes as President Trump is set to impose a new round of economic sanctions on Tehran today. Number two, more witnesses are coming forward to say that migrants along the southern border are being neglected inside government facilities. One doctor compares the conditions to torture. Meanwhile, overnight, we learned the bodies of three young children have been found near the Mexico-Texas border. Dehydration may be to blame. On to number three, major league safety concerns. For the second time in less than three weeks, a fan has turned into a victim at a big league ballpark. A line drive hit a woman in the face at Dodger Stadium. She was taken to the hospital. That incident has renewed calls for more protective netting at stadiums. These days, more fans are looking down at their phones, adding to the concern. And one report found since 1998, there's been a 12% increase in the number of foul balls hit during games. Number four now, the big night at the BET Awards. Last night, was jam-packed with high-energy performances in L.A., but this year's awards also doubled as a celebration of late rapper Nipsey Hussle, gunned down back in March near his clothing store in Los Angeles. He was honored with a humanitarian award. Mary J. Blige won this year's Lifetime Achievement Award, and Tyler Perry took everyone to church accepting BET's Ultimate Icon Award. It's all about trying to help somebody cross. While everybody was fighting for a seat at the table, talking about Oscar so white, Oscar so white, I said, y'all go ahead and do that. But while you fighting for a seat at the table, I'll be down in Atlanta building my own. Because, because what I know for sure is that if I could just build this table, God would prepare it for me in the presence of my enemies. Earlier in the night, Cardi B kicked off the show with an explosive performance of her new single, Press. She took home Album of the Year. And finally, number five, today marks 25 years since The Lion King first hit theaters. And we're feeling the love. Our parent company, Disney, has released a new teaser for its upcoming remake. Beyonce and Donald Glover perform their rendition of Can You Feel the Love Tonight? Can you feel the love tonight? The great kings of the past look down on us from those stars. The peace the evening brings. Those Beyonce yeah. is the voice of Nala. Glover is Simba. Pretty cool. The movie hits theaters July 19th. We're excited. We're so excited. So excited. Can't hide it. Nope. It's morning, America. Morning. Lion right. King, yeah. it's gonna be big. It's right? gonna be big. Akuna Matata. Akuna Matata. Yes. All right, now back to that big story. Thanks for joining us this morning. President Trump imposing a new round of economic penalties on Iran today. He's turning up the pressure, hoping to force Iran into a new round of talks. It comes after he called off a military strike last week, but the regime is not budging. Iranian lawmakers Sunday chanted death to America. And just moments ago, the head of Iran's Navy issued a new warning. ABC's Trevor Alt has those new developments from Washington. Trevor, good morning. Good morning to both of you. Yet today, the United States is going to be presenting what they say is proof that that drone that Iran shot down was in international airspace. And this comes as President Trump is trying to negotiate a deal, but he says a military option is still very much on the table. With tensions high between Iran and the United States, today the Trump administration says it's rolling out new sanctions targeting Iran's economy in an effort to force them to the negotiating table. If Iran wants to become a wealthy nation again, become a prosperous nation, we'll call it, let's make Iran great again. The president saying he called off a military attack on Iran after learning how many Iranians would have likely been killed, telling NBC. I'm not looking for war. And if there is, it'll be obliteration like you've never seen before. But I'm not looking to do that. The president says he would be willing to talk with Iran with no preconditions. His top advisor saying a deal can be reached. But new video from inside Iran's parliament shows Iranian lawmakers chanting death to America. ABC News has learned that while President Trump called off those strikes against Iran on Thursday, the White House did quietly greenlight a cyber attack the same day, disabling software on computer systems used to control rocket and missile launches. Secretary of State Mike Pompeo now meeting with allies in the Middle East about containing Iran. This effort that we've engaged in 
to deny Iran the resources to foment terror, to build out their nuclear weapon system, to build out their missile program. Uh, we are going to deny them the resources they need to do that. Now, over the weekend, I asked President Trump about the possibility of Iran shooting down another unmanned drone and what he would do. And he said that we would have to see, but he didn't think Iran would do that. But of course, now this morning, we have this new warning from Iran's naval chief, who is saying they have the capability to shoot down more unmanned drones. Mm -hmm. So this conflict, far from over, even though President Trump says he's trying to negotiate a deal. Today, Kenneth. Yeah, and Trevor, the president is trying to get Iran back to the negotiating table, but he's being criticized for pulling out of the Iran nuclear deal in the first place, obviously mainly by Democrats, Democrats who mm -hmm. are trying to replace him in 2020. And there are some who are saying that he may be running out of options. Yeah, including some of that criticism, Kenneth, is coming from people who are familiar with conflicts in the Middle East. Former uh, chairman of the Joint Chiefs, Mike Mullen, who was the principal military advisor to President George W. Bush and President Obama, essentially says the President Trump might be running out of room here because you have to think about the fact that we were minutes away, literally, from launching that military strike last week with Iran. We are running out of cards to play as this continues to escalate, and we very well could back ourselves into a war with Iran or step forward aggressively. And we've, we've heard that concern from Democrats. Senator Chuck Schumer has said he's worried that we were going to bumble into a war. But, yeah, you mentioned uh, the presidential candidate, Senator Cory Booker, essentially said on this week yesterday that we started this by pulling out of the Iran deal. President Trump making that decision to unilaterally leave a deal that's not just with Iran. It was with several countries. And now we might be putting ourselves on an island here, the United States, and not really having any other options as we move forward. Mm. All right. Well, Trevor Alt breaking it down for us in Washington. Thank you, sir. We appreciate it. Thank you. Anytime. And now to a developing story from the southern border. Border Patrol agents in Texas have found the bodies of four people, two infants, a toddler, and a woman along the Rio Grande in an area known for human smuggling. Investigators believe they may have died of dehydration. And that discovery comes amid allegations of neglect and mistreatment at border facilities. Witnesses are using words like torture. In the meantime, uncertainty is sending fear through many communities after President Trump postponed immigration raids. We're fired up. Can't take no more. Protesters in Los Angeles directing their anger toward President Trump's threat to launch new deportation operations. Saying he's going to do, do these massive deportations uh, one day and then one day he's not. It's the fear he's stealing in our community is not okay. The protests come hours after President Trump delayed raids by ICE, targeting more than 2,000 people in family units who had already received final orders to leave the country. The president tweeted, at the request of Democrats, I have delayed the illegal immigration removal process for two weeks. Our families are still in danger. Our families still need to be united. We still need a solution that's going to cover everybody. ABC News has learned the president called off the raids after House Speaker Nancy Pelosi urged him not to go through with it. This week, Congress will consider a plan to send $4.5 billion in humanitarian aid to the border, where facilities are overwhelmed with a record number of families. This felt worse than jail. Dr. Dolly Severe examined infants and children being held at a facility in McAllen, Texas. She compares the conditions to torture, with babies drinking from unwashed bottles for days and fluorescent lights on 24-7. The conditions at these facilities are placing them at increased risk for infection, disease and death. Attorney Warren Binford, who interviewed children at this facility in Clint, Texas, says children are left to care for each other. They're sleeping on concrete blocks. There are open toilets in the room. There is no soap. When asked about the reportedly dire circumstances, the president blamed Democrats. We're doing a fantastic job under the circumstances. The Democrats aren't even approving giving us money. Where is the money? You know what? The Democrats are holding up the humanitarian aid. In response, Customs and Border Protection say they have limited resources, but they work to provide the best care possible. And as Democrats prepare to face off in their first primary debates this week, yet another presidential hopeful has joined the very, very crowded field. Former Pennsylvania Congressman Joe Sestick just became candidate number 25. The retired three-star admiral says he waited so late to announce because his daughter was fighting brain cancer. Another candidate, South Bend, Indiana Mayor Pete Buttigieg, says he will attend Thursday's debate following a heated town hall meeting about the death of a black man in his city. Buttigieg listened as South Bend residents angrily call for changes in the police department after 54-year-old Eric Logan was shot by a white officer 
The officer claimed Logan had a knife that he refused to drop. ABC's Tara Palmieri questioned Buttigieg about his leadership on the issue. But you're running on your record, so how can you do that when you have so much division at home and yet you claim you can unify the country? Well, we've got a lot of challenges at home, and these issues aren't easy. Part of how you earn your paycheck as a mayor is to walk into no-win situations. But we've done a lot of work. We've got a lot of work to do together. Uh, Buttigieg is calling for the Justice Department to investigate Eric Logan's death. Now to a political standoff in Oregon where Republican lawmakers are boycotting the legislature in hopes of blocking a climate change bill. The state house was shut down Saturday because of a militia threat. Republican state senators don't have enough votes to kill the bill, so they're trying to run out the clock until the session ends. And some of them left the state after the governor threatened to send state troopers to round them up. They'll now be fined $500 for every day they miss. We have an update on the recovery of retired Red Sox star David Ortiz. A statement over the weekend said Big Poppy is out of the intensive care unit at Massachusetts General Hospital in Boston. Ortiz arrived at the hospital two weeks ago today after being shot in his native Dominican Republic. A bunch of mugs only a mama could love battle for the title of world's ugliest dog. Beauty was way more than skin deep in Petaluma, Oof. California. 19 dogs battled for the ugly title. Some wore glasses. More than a few had spiked hair, but only one came away with the $1,500 grand prize and title as of ugliest dog, and that was Scamp. Scamp. The tramp, who is now a champ, and is proud owner of Vaughn. Scamp has finally gone from Scamp to Tramp to Scamp the Champ. They say Scamp is a therapy dog. He was rescued in 2014. He volunteers at his local airport, elementary school. Libraries and senior centers. Um, so the way to win this, obviously, is to have your dog's tongue sticking out. Um, <laughs> like what? Like what did it look like? I'm not gonna do it <laughs> because you guys like to do memes around here, and I. Oh ain't, yeah, you're right. Are those gifts? Mm -mm, <laughs> yeah. Nope. Nope. Not gonna do it. And the fact um, that they're therapy dogs. A scamp is a therapy dog. Hopefully, not terrorizing the kids. <laughs> He's a therapy dog, like. <laughs> I can't. I can't. Um, Y'all leave Because I could not alert. imagine if I was upset. <laughs> and they brought in a therapy dog. And it was. <laughs> All right. Moving on. Let's talk about some bees. How about that? Yeah. Coming up, the new alarm being raised about the bees and the butterflies. And the warning we're hearing from one young expert after this. Welcome back. Now to the concern over the dwindling number of bees. Experts are raising a new warning about how it's wreaking havoc on our ecosystem, even threatening our food supply. Here's ABC's Rob Marciano. The workhorses of pollination, fertilizing flowers and crops, over 30% of the food Americans eat is spawned by honeybees. And recently, the population of these vital pollinators is dropping at an alarming rate. So we went to the only standalone invertebrate zoo in the world to look into it. Why do we think the bee population is in decline? So there are a lot of factors that play into the decline of bees. Lack of habitat, also pesticide use and uh, pathogens. What about climate change? What about a warming world? So that could be a huge impact. Some of it has to do with when plants bloom. So if you're a bee and you come out in April every year expecting to see a certain flower blooming, and now because of the change in climate, it's blooming in March, You've missed your window. And those plants then struggle to bear fruit. All right, let's go check out our chief pollinators. Into the hives I go with zookeeper Sarah Triplett. Whoa, look at all those bees. So the first thing they'll do is the young bees can excrete this wax out of um, glands on their abdomen, and they'll form it into these cells. And then the bees will leave the hive and go collect nectar from flowers. But those negative factors now disrupting this very necessary pollination process. Well, if you don't mind, the bees are kind of freaking me out. I'm, I'm going to go check out the butterflies. <laughs> okay, that sounds good. These other pollinators facing similar fights. Wow, look at this. This is amazing. Pretty cool, huh? Very cool. How many butterflies you got flying around in here? That, over a thousand. Over a thousand? From all over the world. And our resident butterfly expert, eight-year-old Zelda Oaks, recognizes the importance of these animals. What would you tell other kids that are are maybe f uh, uh, afraid of bugs or don't like bugs? I would tell them that bugs usually are helpful to people 
and you can help them help you. All right, thanks to Rob there. Let's go across the pond now to Lama Hassan in the London Bureau, who's watching the shocking election victory for Turkey's opposition party in Istanbul. Lama, good morning. Yeah, good morning to you guys. Lovely to be here with you. So listen, let's start exactly with what you said, Turkey, because there are huge headlines coming out uh, of Istanbul overnight, where the ruling party, the AK party, of course, the party of President Recep Tayyip Erdogan, has now lost control of Istanbul, which is a big deal, even though they were mayoral elections, because even the president himself said that if you win Istanbul, you win the rest of the country, so you win the rest of Turkey. So the president has been dealt a stinging blow, leading some analysts to believe that this could potentially be the beginning of the end for the president. So just a recap of how we got to this point. In March, they did have mayoral elections, and uh, the uh, leader of the opposition party won by a narrow margin. The AK party were not happy about it. They hit back, demanded another contest, another rerun, which of course they had uh, yesterday Today, and the results came out that the opposition leader this time won. Not only uh, did he win, rather, he won by a, an even larger margin than he did in March. The president this time not contesting it, uh, but actually congratulating the opposition leader. Uh, and this, what this means is this ends 25 years of rule in Istanbul. So it's a pretty big deal. Wow. And Lama, moving on to the mass protests in the Czech Republic. Hundreds of thousands have been demonstrating in Prague, calling for the prime minister there to resign. And it's the biggest protest since the Velvet Revolution that brought down the communist regime back in 1989. Tell us what this is all about. Uh, yeah, so some stunning images coming uh, out of uh, the Czech Republic, coming out of Prague, where, as you say, hundreds of thousands of protesters uh, coming out in full force, taking to the streets, demanding the country's prime minister resign. The prime minister is facing uh, criminal investigations over alleged uh, fraud uh, of using uh, some just over $2 million in subsidies, which, of course, the prime minister uh, disagrees with. He will not and dismisses all of this and he uh, refuses to resign. But of course, the protesters, they're not going anywhere. Uh, they've even organized another demonstration, which is due to take place in November, to mark the Velvet Revolution, which you uh, just mentioned. Uh, and some organizers believe that uh, 250,000 uh, people came out, which would make it the biggest uh, protest uh, since the fall of communism in 1989. So watch this space, and this is definitely a story to keep an eye on. Definitely keep an eye on that one. And Lama, before you go, uh, briefly here, so apparently uh, we found out that a woman on a flight is a deep sleeper and an airline has some explaining <laughs> to do. What's up with that? Yeah, I mean, that's one way of putting it. This is the kind of story that really does leave you shocked and sort of like scratching your head. How could this take place? So get this. Yes, a woman was flying on Air Canada and she was traveling from Quebec to Toronto. Uh, she is fast asleep, wakes up, still buckled in her seat. Uh, in total darkness, the aircraft had been parked uh, and she had, she had been forgotten about. Um, I don't know how you would describe this, but yeah, obviously the ground staff didn't see her. No one woke her up. Uh, her cell phone wasn't working. She didn't have enough battery, so she couldn't get any help. She managed to get to the cockpit, managed to find a flashlight uh, and also managed to get the attention of a baggage handler who rescued her and, you know, uh, you, as you can imagine, described her as a, in a state of shock. Now, Air Canada did uh, say that this, this confirmed this story and said that they are investiga investigating it. But again, this is something that just leaves, leaves you baffled that, you know, something like this would happen because we've all disembarked planes and you see people rushing on, you know, maintenance, uh, uh, people who clean the planes. How could they forget about her or how could they have not seen her? It's just remarkable. And as uh, Janae pointed out earlier, how could the flight attendants not wake her up with that whole put your seat they back see up? If your seat's back exactly. just Exactly. Right. Yes, they're, they bother you about that. that. Yeah, um, absolutely. This, actually, this reminds me of a scene uh, from the Langoliers. Uh, for all of the, I don't know if anybody has seen that movie. Go Google it, the Langoliers. 
Oh my goodness. It's a, it's a, it's a, that's Lana, a, tri you're, you're, a Lana, trivia you're question for you guys. Oh my God. Wait, Lama, do you know that movie from the 90s? I, I don't, you know, I'm laughing because I can just imagine, because this really is something out of a movie. Yeah, it was it? a book based. Oh, you can't make it up. Yes, it's actually a Stephen King book, in fact. So oh. there you go. Thing of the 90s. I watched the miniseries. Then. Until, yeah. People know it. People know it. <laughs> oh Lama, my goodness. Lama, thank, thank you, you so, so much, much for joining you're us welcome. this morning. Thank you. Thank you. You've been reading Stephen King novels since you were like three. Yeah, it's pretty much. That's why I'm so. What? Feeble. Figures. Let's get a check of our <laughs> notification now. Starting with good news for rhinos. This newborn, just the third successful artificial insemination, but that mama. Oh, look. So this baby was like 125 pounds or something Maybe when it was 180. born. Something, a whole bunch of pounds. <laughs> a whole bunch of pounds. Mama had More to than be your pregnant baby. for a lot more than my baby. She was pregnant for what, like a year and a third? 488 days. That's a, a year lot. And a third. Sorry, it sounds like, yeah, like good at math. Yeah. It sounds like a lot. Yeah, a whole <laughs> bunch of time, but look, they've got a baby. Oh, congratulations. And in other animal news, the curious otter made a new friend on the dock. The man saw it, and he said, You ought to be my friend. And the otter said, Get some new jokes. Right. All right, how about this one lottery winner just saw half his winnings fly away to his ex-wife. He won a $30 million Mega Millions jackpot. But guess what? His divorce proceedings were still ongoing. It wasn't finalized to 2018. He won this jackpot in 2013. The judge ruled you've got to split that with your ex-wife. Hashtag got him. And celebrities apparently... Can't buy everything. Especially Cam Newton. A passenger captured this video on a recent 10-hour flight of the Panthers quarterback, appearing to offer a fellow passenger $1,500 to switch seats on that yeah. flight from Char from Paris to Charlotte. Newton apparently wanted more leg room, but the man said no. It's a long flight. I guess for that guy, the extra room was worth the $1,500. So Cam just went back to his seat. Oh. oh. My goodness. And finally, in our notifications, something has torn up Twitter over this weekend. Could you be Beyonce's assistant? Okay, so obviously the answer is I would give it a, a good try. I definitely would. Um, right. So it's this Twitter thread that goes through, and you got to pick different options. Yes. So, for instance, if... if um, It starts off with, like, what would you get her for yeah. breakfast? Right. Granola and strawberries. Or like Five-star breakfast. Five-star breakfast. I did the granola. So then you go down and you pick A or B, essentially. Yeah. If you picked granola, and choose this. I will say that I picked a swimming option, and that was wrong. Oh, and then... I got fired. I had her getting ready in the car. She threw up, and I got fired. You got to so, look it up. So that yes. brings us to our question of the day. Could you serve... Queen B, do you have what it takes? We tried, we failed. Yeah. Well, let's bring in our, our friend, Trevor Ault. Let's bring him let's back. Bring Trevor. Him back. Hey, Trevor. You know, Trevor Hi. gets to talk about so many serious things. Yeah. We had him talking about and Ron This is obviously earlier. serious. Uh, so. This is also very. Trevor, could you be Beyonce's assistant or would you get fired after like a day? Well, first of all, it's Chief Beyonce Correspondent Trevor Ault, if we could please get that right Our with bad, my Trevor. official title. Uh, unsurprisingly, for as little as I know about Beyonce, I actually did this yesterday, apparently in preparation for this, and I made it really far. I what? made it until I got fired because I didn't have titanium straws. Oh, but that was, was like a, a late, that's, that's that got late game. Yeah. So but you the, got the hotel that far? Thing, I did. So yeah, instead apparently of um, I'm, preparing I'm, uh, for your story on Iran, you were <laughs> going through Twitter trying well, to see if you could be Beyonce's. I mean, assistant. you can kind of sleepwalk through the conflicts in the Middle East, but Beyonce is really where the intense focus and studying has to come into <laughs> That's play. That's very true. And Trevor, I'm so impressed how far you made it. So where did you pull the inspiration from? How did you know? Were you just guessing? Uh, a lot of it, yeah. <laughs> a lot of it was just straight guessing, but I, I just assumed. This is probably the more, just pick the more difficult answer. Yeah. So you and chose to play all night over sandcastles? <laughs> yeah. Oh, the answer was, well, I don't know what either of these sounds, I don't know what either of these sounds Oh, like, no, so you're not go. supposed to admit that you don't know what a Beyonce song is. This That's why guy. I'm an effective yep. assistant, because I'm just focused on getting her where she needs to be. There you go. Oh, the there you go. Music. He wasn't yeah. fangirling like we were. I'm thinking, like, oh, does she, should she get ready in the car? Do I get to sit next to her? Uh, that's true. <laughs> no. I mean, when you're as close to Beyonce as I am, you really have to drown out the noise like that. All right. See, he's already, see when you're focused like that and you yeah. think you already have the job, you right. pretend you have the job. 
mm -hmm. will happen. Ah, oh, yes. Trevor. So yeah, put yourself in the Beyonce assistant shoes. We knew <laughs> that we were making a good call bringing you in for this. We had yes. no idea how good of a call it was. <laughs> Finally, a, yeah, a correspondent work that I am qualified for. Yes. <laughs> Trevor All in D.C., thank you so much again. Thank you. Anytime. All right, well, coming up, the drama playing out 25 stories above Times Square. Daredevil siblings walking a wire for the first time after a near-death experience. More when we come back. Here's what to watch out for today. President Trump will sign an executive order on health care pricing. Trump tweeted over the weekend about the new sanctions planned against Iran without providing details. Those sanctions are set to go into effect today. Senator Bernie Sanders is set to propose a sweeping bill to eliminate $1.6 trillion of student debt as part of a larger initiative to make college, college tuition free, college's tuition free to be paid for by a tax on Wall Street. The International Olympic Committee will decide who will host the 2026 Winter Olympics. The final choice is between Milan in Northern Italy and a dual bid from Sweden and Latvia. And the U.S. women's soccer team takes on Spain in the first game of the knockout round of the World Cup. The winner of that game will take on France in the next round. The Americans have yet to allow a goal in the entire tournament. They are a force. Plus, don't forget to tune into the debrief for an update on all our top stories and the briefing room for a breakdown of the latest headlines in politics. Well, now to the drama. So many stories above Times Square. The tension was high at the crossroads of the world as two members of the famed Walinda family took a walk over the famed landmark. The walk seen live on ABC was especially nerve-wracking in the wake of a major mishap two years ago. Our Will Gans was there in the crowd. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to you, Father God. A prayer 25 stories above New York City. Nick and Liana will end a defying death yet again. It was a lot harder to get on the wire than I had thought it was going to be. Starting a quarter of a mile apart from one another on opposite ends of Times Square. The brother and sister walking a steel wire less than an inch wide. Only two years after this, the fall nearly ending Liana Walenda's life, breaking every bone in her face and several others. Her return to the wire, nothing short of miraculous. Two times higher and four times longer than anything she's ever done. I was worried that I was going to be more nervous, um, but, but what I said is real, the fear really is gone. But this moment when Nick had to step over Liana so they could continue their high-flying walk, stopping hearts in Times Square. The city that never sleeps, falling silent. But after 36 minutes, they did it. How'd you do that? Even Nick himself surprised by what surprised him. Maybe the biggest surprise was that the wire was as stable as it was. He and his sister beating the odds, returning to the wire in front of a live TV audience. But for the flying Walendas, it's where they belong. Fear kind of gripped me for a little bit after the accident, and uh, it's gone. I was home. So we wonder what will Nick will end to do next. Yeah. He says well. his next stunt may be a high wire walk over an active volcano. Yikes. How about that? Yeah. Um, I mean, how impressive. does that compare to, to Times Square? To Times Square. Similar. Yeah. I'd say. <laughs> the roaring crowds, the erupting volcano. Yeah. yeah. My goodness. Uh, well, hats off to them, though. They are incredible. They are. On to the next goodness. one. Yep. That's it for us today. Have a great Monday. We'll see you tomorrow.